an email. You can email comments and questions to Milbray Council Meetings at ci.milbray.ca.us. As we get started, I would like to go over a few ground rules to ensure proper decorum, as this is our first time. Uh, during tonight's special city council meeting, the public can listen, but two-way communication other than email by the public to the city council will be limited to council members themselves and staff. For the council and staff on the phone, please direct comments and questions through me, and I will recognize you at the appropriate time. Everyone will have a chance to be heard and speak if desired, but we can only discuss the item on the agenda as that element of the Brown Act remains intact. Again, general public can participate in this meeting by emailing comments to Milbray Council Meetings at ci.milbray.ca.us. And only comments about the agenda item, which is the declaration of emergency due to COVID-19 outbreak, will be allowed. All email comments received by 6.30 p.m. will be read aloud by the city clerk. As usual in all city council meetings, Comments will be limited to three minutes per comment. If more than 10 comments are received, time shall be reduced. Although we welcome and encourage public communication, the views and information presented in these comments are not necessarily the views of the council or the members of the public in Millbrae. So with that, let's get started. And if we can have the city clerk call roll and move on to the agenda item. This is Elena Suazo, city clerk. We will proceed with the call council member lee here council member pappen here council member oliva here vice mayor schneider here mayor holliber here all council members are present Okay, um, and let's move on to the agenda item. So perhaps uh, we can have the city manager, uh, Mr. Williams, uh, give uh, a brief presentation on, on the agenda item. Yes, uh, good evening, Mayor Holabar, members of the city council. This is Tom Williams, city manager, city of Melbourne. As you know, on March 16th of this year, Governor Newsom issued executive order N29-20 and San Mateo County Health Officer issued an order consistent with the governor's direction that directed all residents of the county to shelter in place effective 12.01 a.m. on March 17th through 11.59 p.m. April 7th, 2020. The governor's executive order included not only San Mateo County, but also the city and county of San Francisco, Marin County, Contra Costa County, Alameda County, Santa Clara County, and Santa Cruz County. This order was just to try to stop the spread of COVID-19 by, by limiting or eliminating its transmission. It allows people to leave their home for essential services only. This is for groceries, pharmacy, medical, and employees required to conduct essential services. Carrying out the governor and the county health officer order will have a significant impact on the city's revenue and ongoing operations to deliver essential services. So the emergency declaration is now needed for the city of Millbury to access funding, equipment, and supplies from the California Governor's Office of Emergency Services, and also the Federal Emergency Management Association, FEMA. And this will help us assist in the battle against the spread of the coronavirus. By declaring a local emergency, the city has granted power to allow us to continue providing vital service during the duration of the emergency and limit the impact of the coronavirus on our community and the city's employees who are on the front lines combat the coronavirus is continuing to serve the public and deliver essential services. So there's a resolution that I'd like to just briefly go over. Most importantly, under Millbrain Municipal Code Section 2.25.060A6, it provides that in the event a proclamation of a local emergency or the proclamation of a state of emergency by the governor or the director of the state office of emergency services, the director of the emergency, emergency service may do each of the following. Make and issue rules and regulations on matters reasonably related to the protection of life and property affected by such emergencies. Provided, however, such rules and regulations must be confirmed at the earliest track of the time by the city council, which is the purpose for the emergency. Obtain vital supplies, equipment, 
and such other property found lacking and needed for the protection of life and property, and to bind them to a fair value thereof, and if required immediately, commandeer the same for public use. Also requires the written disturbances of any city officer or employee that is in the event of the proclamation of the emergency in the county in which the city is located or the existence of the state of war of emergency to command the aid of as many citizens of the community as being necessary in the execution of duty. Such persons shall be entitled to all privileges, benefits, and immunity as a result of the law or for regular or due to service of war. This is worse. So lastly, the recommendation of the Secretary of Personal and Material Security Department or agency is reported under this proclamation. And I would turn it back to the mayor for city council questions of myself. We also have Mr. Bill Riley. He is our emergency operations center manager, who is here for questions as well. Mayor. Mayor. Yes. Um, well, now I'm going to say Mr. Riley is going to give some comments. Mayor, may I ask a question? This is Annie Oliva. Yes. So, uh, Tom, Tom, I have a question with regards to what this really, what this really, what this really does. Can you hold on just one moment? Sure. Yeah, because his number is recognized for his number. We'll just use your we'll just use your phone. Yes. Can we meet the phone call? No, the whole thing. Can we hear any? We're, we're not hearing you. Mayor. Are you mute that phone? It won't keep that. Mute yours, Tom. Oh, wait, it's feeding here. Hold on just one moment. We have some technical difficulties. I, 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 I'm disconnected. Mayor, this is Vice Mayor Snyder. Everyone put their individual phones on mute. Yes, yes, we're working through that. Just just give us one moment, please. Okay, uh, are you ready to proceed? Can you hear us? Recorder has joined the conference. This conference is being recorded. Go ahead, Bill. All right. Okay, uh, Tom Hi. or uh, Bill Riley, are you ready to proceed? I'm ready. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay, uh, go ahead. Our initial report our Millbury uh, EOC is on standby status at this time, which is Technically, technically known as activation level three, uh, as far as room is concerned. Uh, what that means is we have the city manager as the director of emergency services, 
uh, is activated uh, with his existing management team. We are not necessary to bring in extra personnel. The reason for that is we're not uh, in a position where we really have to support ongoing operations beyond our normal business. Uh, what we do need in this, this type of situation is public information is the most part in support from our operational area. Our operational area, San Mateo County uh, Emergency Operations Center has been activated and has been for the last two and a half weeks. Uh, in that time, they have set up a structure uh, to support the entire county and uh, working in a uh, close relationship with county uh, medical uh, EMS. Uh, what uh, has transpired so far, and I'm sure you're aware of all the things, the, you know, the, the, after the uh, Dr. Scott Morrow declared uh, the necessity of uh, uh, staying at home and closed all the businesses. Uh, we moved uh, forward with some isolation techniques. It, had, it is known that we can provide uh, our city services without uh, interruption uh, because of the things that the way we're structured with the exception of uh, our over-the-counter uh, services which has have been reduced and they can be done electronically and I think that has gone out previously. Uh, we have control objectives that's been established through the operational area of emergency operations center and those are pretty basic to maintain life and safety, identify and secure equipment as necessary, uh, work with community leaders which we have done. We've had conference calls from, uh, with the elected officials, of course, city managers and other uh, stakeholders. Again, they're working with the federal, state, and local partners who save care of passengers with the, uh, the, uh, uh, with the ship that was uh, quarantined and uh, people that were taken off and they were, they were trans some of the members were taken to San Carlos. Uh, with that in mind, we realize that there's other needs for sheltering that may take place. Uh, one of the things we're facing right now is the possibility of surge capacity of the hospitals and if they get impacted and how they can uh, address the overflows. Uh, the thinking at this time is if we get to a point where that becomes more, uh, more of a problem, they can release some of the ones that, uh, that are non uh, or that have been through the process and then just trying to recover. And if they get that, they can isolate them separately. And so they're right now they're just contracting with hotel uh, one hotel for sure, and I think there's other capacities are doing. We also have uh, some uh, facilities at the event center to take care of some of the other problems we have. We're trying to address the homeless problem uh, as well. Doing other projections to handle with the uh, first responders, should they come down with it and we need to isolate them, uh, also looking in that respect. Uh, we are monitoring the 211 system on a regular basis, ensuring the quality of information is provided. And that there's some pre recorded messages with info on a new shelter in place order and should be pretty well established by this point. Uh, They're establishing a legal hotline and email to provide information for, for small businesses. Uh, again, the EOC are trying to provide logistical support for, our, for EMS needs uh, and for uh, personal protective equipment, which be, is becoming very scarce. Uh, they were coordinated with public safety communications and first responders regarding modified protocols for use potential for exposures for the first responders when responding to the public. Uh, and it's really important that we keep our people healthy as long as possible. So that's uh, working out quite well, I think. Uh, they established, uh, they're starting to establish a centralized volunteer center to provide uh, support for our vulnerable populations. The, uh, this will take some time to bring up and volunteer management is really necessary to uh, ensure that we have the people that are capable of providing those services and also at the same time providing the training and the equipment uh, to achieve what we're, we ask them to do. Uh, with that, they're trying to use uh, our, uh, our already uh, the volunteers that we have in place at this time, which includes our, our, cert, our CERTs, our community emergency response teams, as well as the uh, volunteers in policing and library volunteers, those members have all been uh, vetted. They have, they are disaster service worker qualified and have uh, basic training so they can come on board more quickly. 
Uh, down the road, they might ask for more spontaneous volunteers. Uh, they're also in, uh, looking at establishing a do donation management plan. Right now, they're look looking at donations for uh, uh, medical equipment, and I think that uh, that might be working out before we see anything else, but that is certainly the need at this time. And then uh, at the same time, uh, along with that, the beginning planning for concurrent emergency events, along with what we're experiencing now with the uh, uh, coronavirus, uh, we also have to be prepared for any other event that might occur, earthquake, wildfire, or whatever it might be. Uh, so as you can see, there's a lot of things that can happen. Fortunately, within the operational area, we have quite a bit of expertise, uh, and by centralizing a lot of those functions, it, it is to our advantage and because it is a widespread event, as we are seeing worldwide, it makes sense to, to focus our, our support you know, through our operational area uh, and uh, support them as best we can. I uh, try to get down there every day as a Millbrae representative uh, to coordinate with uh, the needs that we have, and it has been going fairly smoothly at this point. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Riley. I'm sure that um, several members, uh, there, there are probably several questions that um, people have to ask. So maybe if we can do this uh, one council member at a time. Um, anybody have questions? I do, Mayor. This is Annie. Yes, uh, Councilman Oliva, let's start with you and uh, you can go through them one by one and once you're done, let me know. Okay, a couple questions. Um, so, uh, should I just hit them all out at once, and then you can hit them one by one? No, just just, just do them one at a time, and you're the only speaker recognized at this time. Thank you. So, first is, um, I know there's a little bit of concern among our residents with our first responders, and there's been people that have been uh, pulled over and asked, um, what, where are they going or what are they doing? Is that something that we could address possibly tonight? And then secondly, okay, go ahead. Yes. If you'd like me to I can respond to that. Uh, Perfect. I, I sat in on the briefing with the police chief uh, just the other day. His direction is to uh, work with the public in a, in a, in a positive way remind people when they're getting too close. The guidelines permit people to be out in, to, to go shopping, uh, exercise, uh, you know, it is not uh, meant to isolate completely where, you know, people aren't able to get out at all. And with that, I think I take it in mind. I have heard rumors of uh, police officers stopping and uh, for no, no apparent reason. And I think that is not the guidelines that were given to the uh, Millbrae Police Bureau. So I'm not sure beyond that. I questioned that at operational area at the EOC down there, and they were going to be contact. They said they would contact the Highway Patrol and other agencies to see what was happening. Chief Kunkel, I think you. you're on the line. At Trump. Hi, I'm sir. Um, hi, it's uh, Paul Kunkel, the Chief of Police Services, and just so you know. We cannot make traffic stops without an underlying probable cause offense, which is typically a violation of the California Vehicle Code. Uh, we cannot stop people just for being out. Um, during the course of the stop, if an officer or deputy sheriff asks what they're doing out, I think that's acceptable. Um, but we're not pulling people over for no reason just to see why they're out, where they're going, what they're doing. There's four pages of exemptions in the order and I was very clear with my deputies and my entire bureau that uh, if we do see an obvious violation that we have to stop for, uh, I would like our tone at this point to be education um, and not enforcement. Enforcement may be necessary and I'm not averse to them writing tickets, but we are not pulling people over uh, for nothing to ask them where, why they're out, why they're being stopped. Uh, we record every traffic stop in the car and our deputies all wear body worn cameras. Uh, this is also being, I've heard this from different patrol, patrol bureaus and different police departments actually, the people here, this is happening and I don't know where. Um, I've also seen it on social media, so I'm not sure if this is something that's going around. 
Uh, if there's someone who specifically thinks they have, I would encourage them to contact the police bureau and me in particular, Paul Kunkel, K-U-N-K-E-L, and we'll get to the bottom of it. Thank you, Chief. Um, with regards to people that um, are, this, this sounds so ridiculous, but it's honest to God truth, people that are selling uh, Purell and toilet paper and paper products um, on the street, pulling people over saying, do you need anything of, of this sort? Uh, how would you want them to react to that? I have not heard or seen any of that yet. Uh, none of that's been reported to us. Uh, if they do, j just call us and we'll go out and see if we can find who's selling that stuff on the street. Again, that's more of a kind of a business issue than a, a criminal okay. one, it, but a key, a key. <laughs> It has happened. So just call you, they tell them to call you directly. Now call the police bureau and we'll send a deputy out. Thank and you. what we, we're going to want is we're going to have the same thing, the, the location, description, the, the type of car the person's in, if they can grab a license plate, um, the stuff that's going to help us track the person down so we can contact them. Thank you. And then my last question Mr. Mayor? is, sorry, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Gina Pappen. Sure. Yes. Go, uh, you know, just if you have a follow-up uh, well, to that, go ahead. But we're, we're yes, I do. recognizing one speaker yes. at a time. Okay. Yes. Um, the follow-up is that we have been informed that the grocery stores and the all the stores in our region are being regularly supplied with all kinds of items. Uh, the grocery association, the uh, stream of our, our food supply is consistent and everything will be restocked on a regular basis. And I think that's the message we need to get out. Thank you. And also the stores, this is uh, Councilman Wayne Lee. The stores are also limiting the amount of purchases so that the uh, stores don't get empty. Like for instance, Trader Joe's only allowing people to buy two, uh, two of each item. Yes. Okay, yeah, and, Councilman and I believe, Yeah. And I follow up on that I, I, i'm sure that we're we're in tune to all this and we all know that it's not really the supply but it's the stocking if you're on the call today that seems to be the issue so i understand all that but these these are real real questions that are and and experiences actually that i've come through um to what's going on out there okay my last question um would be to uh, tom to declare state of an emergency with our city. Um, could you please explain to everybody that this is for the future of what we'd be able to reclaim with any losses? Because I think that, um, including myself, it's like, what what does this do to us by, by um, what's the realistic that, I guess the Reader's Digest version of what you read that was a little bit to the public um, of what we will do tonight by by acknowledging that we are going to be a state of emergency. So again, this is Tom Williams, city manager here at the city of Millbrae. So a declaration of a local state of emergency will allow us to continue operating, knowing that the governor's order of uh, people um, staying in place with the objective of uh, not going out except for essential services will have a, a significant fiscal impact on the city and our ability to continue to perform essential services. So by declaring emergency, we now become eligible for reimbursement by the state of California and through FEMA, the federal emergency management of, this, of the federal government. So this is, a, in essence, a protective measure for the city fiscally to ensure that we can get reimbursed for all of our efforts and impact of this emergency uh, handed down by and the governor's directives um, to make sure that we can reclaim any of our costs associated with uh, control of the coronavirus. Tom? Annie, this is Joan Kastman, city attorney. Uh huh? Can you hear me? Um, there's a there's a subsidiary effect of the emergency declaration, and that is also to kind of relieve certain formalities and procedures if uh, the city needs to procure items, health-related, safety-related, uh, to protect our employees. Uh, there is a, 
uh, an ability within under an emergency to you know undertake the activities you need that might otherwise be subject to more formal procedures when you're not in an emergency. And uh, so, of course, Tom. So would be how so that that puts Tom in charge as being like the procuring cause, or, like the the go-to guy. Yes, is that exactly okay? Awesome. He's the right. emergency director, and so he he does under an emergency declaration have some accelerated, some enhanced authority Thank to you. get done, which may need to be done in a more extraordinary fashion than under normal times. I don't know if, when we'll see normal times again, but uh, it's really important, I think, to give the city uh, the ability to be nimble. So, and that's so it, would, that, would that apply to, like, martial law, which is, like, hopefully never going to come into effect, but would that be something that Tom would be able to declare? Or that would... No, I mean, no. something like that would, would come back to the council. Okay, this like is martial law? Okay. This is more procedural, and it's, no, it's, no, no. I mean, this is this is giving Tom the ability for the city to to react to the crisis um, and being able to pre, to offer the services it's already offering, but in okay. a climate of this emergency in a more nimble fashion. Perfect. Uh, Thank you, sorry, Joan. No. Councilman Wayne Lee, a uh, follow-up question then is that, uh, so at the end of emergency, the council has to declare the end of emergency or city manager simply says we're done? Well, I think we'll, we will be declaring the end of an emergency. Who's we? Uh, the council. City council? Okay. So, so sorry, um, Ms. Kasman, that means there's no sunset to this? There is no immediate sunset. Uh, we will be checking back with you regularly. Um, I, I, I know that the orders have, um, have an April 7th date, uh, but uh, we, we will be checking with you regularly. You have regular council meetings. You will continue to have those. And Tom, I think is the your director of emergency services would be expected to be providing you with updated reports at every meeting as to what's happening, um, and Mr. O'Reilly, of course, too. But uh, you know what is happening uh, with respect to the emergency, how it's affecting the city, the consequences to the services we provide, and you know at such point as we we no longer need the emergency, we would we would remove it. We being the council. Okay. And I, I think right. Tom Williams again, and I'll just, just, just one more comment. I mean, most of this is for procurement of services and supplies instead of coming to the city council through normal courses of action if we need to procure something rapidly that exceeds my authority for purchasing, this, this allows me to do that. I would then follow back up, you know, if it gets to that point with a daily report to the city council um, as to what activities occurred, um, what we did, and why we had to do it. Um, Bill Riley and myself, as well as County EOC, are in communication every hour. I mean, it's, it's, it's for in constant communication, so I will keep the council informed. Uh, Mr. Mayor, this is Joan again. Yes. Just to let you know that, that the declaration ordinance itself says that the local emergency is deemed to continue to exist until its termination is proclaimed by the city council. Okay, so maybe we can, you know, monitor the situation and uh, when we feel it's appropriate, uh, terminate the order. Correct. Uh, okay. This is Mayor, Councilman. Yes, Councilman Lee, you, you're, you, yes, and then would you like to be recognized if you have any additional questions? Yeah, I have, I have a few things. Uh, okay, I go ahead. I also say that, I also want to say the mayor and the vice mayor and some of the council members are monitoring the regular county briefings for the public to know that we're we're, uh, we're also keeping track of what's going on in the county and the state. Um, okay, so for the resolution, as we and the re resolution on the, the third whereas, where it says, uh, whereas the United States has confirmed case of individual has severe acute respiratory illness caused by the new corona. Uh, COVID-19 or the virus was first detected in Wuhan, 
Hubei Province, People's Republic of China, uh, quote China. Um, given given the uh, given that uh, the uh, uh, amount of um, attacks and uh, vitriol towards Asians, uh, I would like to suggest that we remove that uh, Wuhan as where it was first detected in. We, we don't need to say that. We know where it came from. I'm not denying where it came from, but I'm just concerned about the message we're sending. Um, okay. You're having to point it out. So we could take out the reference to the place and just say which was first detected on December 31st, 2019? Yes. Is that what you yes. would like? Okay. Yes, please. Yep. No problem. Okay. That, that concludes other my comments for now. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. No, that concludes my comments for now. Thank you, okay. Mr. Mayor. Okay. Uh, anyone else? Uh, Councilwoman Tappan or Vice Mayor Schneider? Mayor, I'm just waiting for you to call us. So if you want to. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. This is uh, Vice Mayor Schneider. This is to um, Bill Riley. You referenced the 211 system. The last information I received on 211 is could you elaborate more what the public can do with 211? But what was said three, two days ago was the callback wait time was over an hour. They were hiring more staff or transferring more county staff over and training them in the hope to get the wait time down and that the window for that was going to be 24 or 48 hours. Are they now fully staffed? And, and what is their um, answering phone call time? Time on hold. We, at today's uh, today's meeting, uh, we discussed that, and what I understand, two one one system now, the wait time is six minutes, uh, and I think the average call is only last, you know, two and a half minutes or something like that, four minutes, I mean, four minutes, yeah. And so it's uh, it's improved, uh, and I think they're still working to improve it even more. So it's getting Excellent. down. Excellent. Uh, next question. When I called, which was a few hours after that first announcement that it had gone live, I asked one question that they could answer and one question that they needed to get back. Uh, it's been 72 hours. They haven't gotten back. That's okay. My question is, if for those questions that they do not have answers, for, answers from the public, what is the process that they're using to get the answer, and are they posting them in an FAQ and if so, what website? That's what they're using to build the FAQs, uh, as far as I understand it. And they uh, they have been pretty uh, pretty adamant about uh, answering the questions that come up. There, you have, uh, I think, it, for the public to understand, this is something that we've never been through before. Uh, so it's a lot of things that are uh, occurring that they don't have direct answers to at that time. And especially with uh, some of the call takers, uh, as you know, we bring them in and train them, uh, they certainly not all up to speed. So there are some, you know, might be some uh, problems with that. But they are getting better as they do that, and the information is improving. Uh, but the FAQ should be improving as we go through, because as more and more calls come in and they see the uh, repetitiveness of some of the information, they're going to put it out and push it out and as beyond that in some of their public information announcements. Perfect. Um, as somebody who worked the call center for five years, I, I well understand what they're unto, um, under. For the public who might be listening in, FAQ is frequently asked questions. And the reason to do FAQs is to try to standardize so that everybody is getting the same information in the purest, uh, most accurate form. Um, the last question I would say, because these people are working at 211 from all over the county, uh, it would be helpful if are they located at the ROC, the uh, Regional Oper Operations Center? Uh, or it's I, I don't know. I do not know where they house that, that phone bank. Okay. Well, if they had some maps and they could get a little familiarity with uh, communities, that would be helpful. It will make the public feel calmer when they address them. It's the same thing when we went to regional uh, dispatching. The dispatchers may be from South County and not familiar with North County. And it makes a user, even me, um, a little less confident when I don't get the feeling that they know where I am. So maps can I be very helpful. 
I do know with the technology that they built into the, the new region uh, operations center, uh, a lot of that information is available and there's a lot of maps around there. So I would be surprised if they did not have that in the call center. Okay, they didn't have it when I called uh, the first day. So just bring okay, that up. Okay, I'll follow okay. up on that. I will follow My up on that. My next question, in terms of, of uh, Councilman Lee's request for the resolution, I'm okay with that. I actually, at a distance, spoke to some UPS drivers. This gentleman happened to be Asian. He had been getting some bad experiences. My mailman is Asian, and he is just happy-go-lucky and said everybody's been treating him fine. But, um, yeah, sensitivity to any um, potential, I hate to use the word hate crime, but uh, I think that makes good sense. The, I think... I have other questions, Mayor. Over email, we talked about the ability to talk about um, keeping residents happy, but that's not an agenda item. So if you remember that, tell me if this is not the time to talk about it, and it can be the next time, in which case I think I'm done. You know, if you have specific ideas, um, you know, feel free to bring them up. I think it, it would be okay at this time. Okay. Then um, Councilman Lee and I were talking about our elderly parents, and then I, I ran it. We were on the phone. I talked about a couple of things that might keep our residents um, moving forward and help the city at the same time. And uh, so I passed that over to the mayor and mayor said, sure, um, just getting this out there. And so what, for example, one idea is um, we're all at home and, or a good number of us are at home and I would like to move forward with uh, helpful hints on how everybody can get their homes ready for the fire season. And I'll elaborate more of this, but um, I never got back to Wayne on this. Um, Wayne, uh, the mayor gave permission for you and I to work on a couple of these things if you and I want to work together on them, which I guess is a way of making a subcommittee. Great. Okay. Let's, let's talk about it later. Okay. Very good. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Wayne. Okay. Sure. Okay. Um, now, Councilwoman uh, Pappen, do you have any questions or comments? Um, just if we could, Mr. Mayor, um, I don't know what our website's looking like, but if, if we can refer people to the county website um, yes, and the well. latest info. Okay, great. That's, that would be my concern is all there. And just remind everybody to be kind to one another, and we will get through this. Um, just being careful and uh, considerate. Thank you. Mayor, I'm sorry, uh, Andrew, Peter. question for yes. Gina. Question. Uh, I didn't do it today, but typically every day I check the health website, the county website, the county OES website, and the county website, and um, I haven't found that their information is up to speed. And I know that on the elected officials briefing. I haven't been able to get on the call the last two days, but at the briefing, other council members from other cities have asked for one website. Do we know if they are moving in a direction of one website with all the information? Mayor, if I might interject, this is Annie. I was on sure. the briefing today, and the website, uh, they asked everybody to pe please look at it because they're quite proud that they have made a, quite an accomplishment in the last couple of days. So the county website is looking good. Okay. Yeah, I haven't seen it the last you know two days or so, so I, I wouldn't be able to say. But yeah, I did hear that comment brought up a, a couple times that the website was not entirely clear and, and easy to find information on. But uh, I hope they have fixed it. Okay. And, and they, were, they were they were actually asking for suggestions if there was any more suggestions because they they would like to be the go-to website. Mr. Mayor, uh, yes. Councilman Lee, uh, I saw, uh, can I ask you to also kind of um, do a quick summary for those people listening on, at home um, to, uh, to direct them to some of the many uh, public information that you've been giving um, periodically online? Can you, can you summarize that for our audience? Yeah, sure. Those are all available on the city website under um, the news section. Uh, I've done a couple of video PSAs with MCTV, and I, I believe we've also put out, um, I think, three written uh, updates um, providing the latest information. These things are changing 
very fast. Um, so you know, I'll put something out, and then a couple of days later, it will already be obsolete. So we're trying to stay on top of it and um, you know, running all everything through the county EOC to make sure that, that we're providing accurate information. Um, so yeah, please uh, feel, feel please look at the city website, uh, cityofmilbray.com. Uh, thank you for setting that up, by the way, <laughs> uh, to our IT staff. Um, yeah, cityofmilbray.com for, for the latest information that we have. Yes, uh, Councilman Pappen, and sorry, we, you were cut off there, so um, you, okay. you have the floor. Um, yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, your public service announcements have been very helpful. Thank you very, very much, and also the city manager's contributions there. Um, if we could also do and encourage our residents that although the restaurants are not open and several businesses are not oh, takeout uh, is really appreciated to keep the businesses going locally uh, and also to keep people employed. I think that's really important and if we can encourage that, that would be a great, uh, great way to keep people uh, engaged. Mr. Mayor, Councilman Lee. Yes. Can I, ask, can I ask the city manager to summarize what uh, some of the services that are still available at City Hall? Mr. Mayor? Y yes, Mr. Williams. Okay, so uh, in terms of the services, uh, the city, city facilities for entry to the public are closed, but we continue to provide essential services via online, emails to departments, telephone numbers to departments. Um, our central services that are up and running, of course, their administration, city manager's office, public safety, that's police and fire. Uh, we need to make sure and we continue to make sure that we have reliable and operable infrastructure in our public works departments. That's uh, water flowing and tested, sewer facilities, storm drain, uh, street repair, uh, emergency uh, repair work for street trees. So we're uh, continuing to you know, operate uh, as much as, as normal in terms of our essential services. Our building permit and inspection services are limited to residential development that's currently under construction and commercial buildings that are in their final phase to ensure health and safety. Uh, and, um, you know, in case a commercial building has an electrical permit or something like that, we are moving forward to go ahead and continue to uh, provide building inspection services to ensure uh, the health safety of, of buildings. Uh, residential construction per the governor's order is exempt under certain protocols. We're working with our contractors to make sure that those protocols are in place and our building inspection and project managers out in the field assigned to those projects have all been trained and educated on, on, on what that is and what to do. Uh, if anyone has an emergency repair for a water heater or an HVAC system, uh, our information for plan submittals and building inspection requests are available online on the city's website. Also, our finance department continues to be operable, uh, accounts receivable, accounts payable, water and sewer billings, and other uh, vital city financial functions are, are all operational. Um, in terms of what we're doing community-wide, uh, today we, we released two important uh, programs. One is a list of our businesses or restaurants that are operating to provide pickup and delivery. So you can visit our website and get a list. We want that list to continue to grow. We're asking for people that know of businesses that remain open, restaurants that remain open uh, for pickup and delivery that we get them on the list. We have the telephone numbers that people can call for each of those restaurants that have signed up. Also, we've uh, introduced today a wellness sign-up program for seniors um, that people can go on our website. This is also pushed out on social media that uh, if anyone knows uh, a resident or a community member that's 65 or older that has special needs, please sign up that person. We will coordinate them with the county's uh, EOC and the programs that they have in place centrally to make sure that those residents receive meals, food delivery, um, medication that's as needed. But we need to get that listing of everyone so we can work closely with the county at Central Command to make sure that all of our residents and, and community members are being served. So look for those two things. Please sign up. And if you have any questions, also on our website, we do have a COVID-19 icon that has all the links to CDC and to the county as well as local information from us. So 
we uh, are getting information pumped out daily and uh, do everything we can to, to support the community and our local businesses. And that's, that, that's it, Mayor, unless there are any other questions. Okay. Mayor, I have uh, questions. Oh. Yes, uh, Vice Mayor Schneider. Um, Tom, the 65 age and older, perfectly agree with, but what about families with special needs? Are they included yeah, so the in? Is, yes, special needs are included, so it's both uh, 65 and special needs. Now that's not to say that if somebody knows an elderly person that you know, you know, 60, 63 or 64 that may need help, um, maybe a single household, uh, we we will take that as well. The reason why it's 65 is that's the most vulnerable population, 65 and older. That the directive of the county medical officer is really have those people shelter in place, and that uh, you know we really don't want them leaving their homes. If I might add to that, this is a good time to reinforce the fact, especially to the public, as we do to our CERT program, is to now is the time to take care of your neighbors. Uh, and neighbors taking care of neighbors is certainly the most responsive. Uh, you're going to get, uh, you know, certainly the care is there. So if people are able to do that, check on a neighbor they haven't seen or offer help if, if possible, following our, our distancing and everything else, we're supposed to follow through the protocols. But sure certainly makes sense to reinforce that at this time. Um, Mayor? Mayor, and the hands up. Okay, Sorry, yes, go ahead. Gina or Ann? Uh, no, I'm Annie. Oh, Annie, sorry, Annie. Okay. Annie or yeah, Councilwoman Oliva, you're, you have the floor. Okay, so Bill, thank you very much for saying that and what we've done in our neighborhood and I would like to, uh, to extend this to my council members and our city manager and yourself as well, like you just uh, elaborated uh, to, we on our block, um, we're very mixed from young families to single elderly people. And at five o'clock, if everybody could just, what we've done, I'm not, I'm not saying that we need to put this into place for everybody, but everybody come out in front at five o'clock and Stay the distance, but stay on the driveway and just say that everybody's good and everybody's fine. It sounds, it sounds very simple and very silly, but it has made a very, very nice camaraderie. And um, there, you'd be surprised of what you hear from your neighbors. You know, some days are good and some days are bad, and it's only been a few days. So I would, I would. Uh, I would love to share the success that we've had on Hacienda. And if you guys could all like contribute to your own blocks and do something positive to reach out to your neighbor, like Bill said, it's so important. And Wayne and Ann, I know you have elderly mothers. Me too. And my mom is not able to come into the house. It's been very, very difficult. So, you ha we have got to figure out a new a new way to reach these people that are so important. And I hope my na my mom's neighbors are going to be able to take care of that as well for her. So please, you guys, if we could just come like together and make sure that everybody's okay in their houses. This is Mr. more than just yeah. a virus. Mr. Mayor, this is Gina uh, Pappen. Y yes, uh, Councilman Pappen, Along and then we'll go to public comment. Um, yes, my, along along those along those lines, the city of Foster City, I believe, is doing that and encouraging their neighbors. I'm going to be encouraging my neighbors too. But you know, just pop outside at five o'clock and go to the driveway, kind of wave to another, um, and really improve your. Or just make sure we're checking on everybody. So I think that's a wonderful idea, and I would encourage others to do so. I'm going to do that, and I think Councilmember Lee too. So thank you, Annie, for bringing that up. Um, I do think it's great. Mayor, hey, you know, idea. You guys, um, can, Mayor, okay, you City can, Clerk uh, Suazo, um, can, do, do we have any emails that came in for public comment by, by the 6.30 deadline? This is Elena Suazo, City Clerk. We received one email comment. 
I will go ahead and read it. The email is from Natasha Huang, received at 6.11 p.m. The message is, there is echoing on the phone when the speaker speaks. That is the end of the message. Okay, so we're not sure who that, uh, which speaker, if there's one speaker in specific, specifically or just in general, but um, you know, this is the first time we're doing these remote meetings and um, if we have another one, we will uh, learn from this and, and hope to, to improve upon it. Okay. Um, Mayor, I'm sorry. Uh, yes. I did have a comment, and this might be okay. Too Vice early. Mayor, Vice Mayor Schneider, and then Councilman Lee, and then we'll call the question. Okay. Um, back to what Annie said. I think that sounds lovely. Here is, and I haven't been able to get an answer from the county um, on this. When there are fam uh, people like me. I'm 62, people like Wayne, whatever, however age his is. When we've got elders at home, it is hard to know what we might be bringing back into the home. Um, it'll, I would love clear guidance. So when I, I went shopping yesterday, I went shopping Saturday, the experience was much different in terms of how crowded and standing in line, but I still came home and changed clothes put the bags, I went to uh, disposable bags so that I wasn't tracking anything, and I put everything away as opposed to my mother uh, doing it, who is 92 and a half with COPD. I would love to see some more detailed guidelines of how those of us who have elderly at home, um, any additional precautions we may be taking. That said, I think we're gonna get some updated health information from Italy on um, it is not just the older people that might be having uh, stronger, uh, stronger illnesses. But at least right now, clarification of how caretakers who are living in the home can protect the people most at risk. Thank you. Uh, Councilman uh, Lee, I just want to make the motion to approve the declaration of emergency due to the COVID-19 outbreak. Council Member Pappen, second. Thank you. Okay. Uh, maybe uh, if the city clerk can uh, do a roll call vote, please. This is city clerk Elena Suazo. Please provide your votes. Council member Lee? Yes. Council member Mappen? Yes. Council member Oliva? Aye. Count Vice Mayor Snyder? Yes. Mayor Holliber? Aye. The resolution proclaiming a local emergency passed unanimously. Okay, thank you everyone for uh, accommodating this uh, special meeting. Um, just uh, so the public knows, our, our regularly scheduled meeting of March 24th will be canceled. Um, we are focusing on essential business at this time and obviously the uh, COVID-19 response is taking up, um, I'd say the vast majority of the city manager's time at this point, Tom, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but if we have any uh, other essential business, uh, essential deadlines, um, you know, rec centers moving ahead with, with a, a tight timeline, um, we will likely call another special meeting and, and again do it remotely. Um, so please, um, you know, keep uh, you know for those members of the public following along, please follow our city website uh, for the latest news and if any other meetings are happening. Okay, so thank you all, and uh, we will adjourn uh, for the evening, and uh, we will uh, reconvene at a time to be determined. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor thank and you. Council and Tom. Thank you. Thank you all.